this, this is a very important question. So people have often projected ECMO as an alternative to ventilation. It's not that. It is actually the next step up. Like, for example, you're, you're breathing through a face mask with oxygen. You're not able to uh, cope with that. You have non-invasive ventilation whereby you have a tighter mask, but you've not been, you don't have a tube down your throat. And then the next step is a tube down your throat, what we call mechanical ventilation. And then the next step up is the ECMO. However, what I have to clarify here is the ECMO has a window in which it is most useful. By that, I mean you could go into early with the ECMO machine. And as I've already said, it's a double-edged weapon. So you really don't want to put people on ECMO much before they need it. Or it becomes too late when they already have multi-organ failure and sepsis or their airways are so damaged that they're very unlikely to improve. Uh, so you don't want to go in too late. But unfortunately, the assessment of this window is very specialized. How we do it is we have a set of scores by which we look. Uh, previously, I told you about the ventilatory and the gas exchange function. So if the patient's lung becomes too incompliant or not compliant, it's getting worse and more stiff. Or if the patient's gas exchange is getting poor, we have certain yardsticks for this that we pick up from the ventilator, the airway pressures, the levels of oxygen for the amount of oxygen you give, levels of carbon dioxide and the rest of it. And then you make a uh, score and if that score is above a particular number in Murray it's about three and it's progressing then we think it's time to go in with the ECMO. However if you have very significant bloodstream infections with sepsis and multi-organ failure the ECMO is very unlikely to help you because the damage that has been done by the multi-system inflammation has already happened. So this window unfortunately can be from just a few hours but usually within a few days. The other thing is the number of days of ventilation. The data from the registry, we have a registry internationally called ELSO, to which we also contribute. That data uh, is very clear in that if patients are ventilated for less than seven days, ideally less than five days, their chance of surviving the ECMO and getting back to a, a normal life is quite high. If it is beyond 11 days, then the chances are not zero, but they certainly diminish. So there are two categories of patients. So uh, this is how we assess whether the ECMO is going to be useful for a particular patient.